we have a curator system with all offenses clear in here and we're going to be doing some attacks on a on two windows machine uh, these windows machines are fully patched if we do windows updates we see that this machine is actually fully patched as we can see here up to date and so is this system as well right we're going to move laterally from the first one into this one and all begins by uh, opening a Word document that is going to communicate, that's going to do a reverse shell with a Kali machine that we have ready for the attack. The details are in another video, so to, to keep this video short. So when we open this Word document, we're going to see that a single line of a PowerShell is going to be invoked. In fact, that's a request to activate the license. If we go here on their developer, we go macros and we edit that macro we can see that it's a PowerShell of a command that is all this garbage stuff uh, stuff that is not garbage but it's encoded base64 the idea of doing this is to avoid detection it's actually we don't need this document anymore because we got a session established by just opening that document so we can close all these and let me go to my notes to explain a little bit more what's going on. The command that we executed is the one down here. And that's nothing more than an encoded Base64 version of the command in here. But it will work uh, the same. But this is easy to be detected by any SIM. If I encoded it with Base64 encoding, I'm, I'm betting that Curator won't be able to see any of this. Right? And if you're not familiar with encode base 64 we're going to use it uh, even more in here. If you, we take these lines, which is basically the same line of text that we saw up there, because we're going to encode this part, and we add this extra command in PowerShell to do the encoding. In fact, let's actually go into uh, any Windows machine and invoke PowerShell. And if we paste that set of PowerShell commands in here, that text becomes all this encoded thing, right, to avoid detection. Since it begins in K, A, A, B, O, A, all that, right? And that's uh, precisely what we did with this encoding, right? And that generated the first session, so we, the, the, all is good. But the problem with this session is that I need to uh, achieve persistency and one way of achieving persistency is to escalate privileges to do some high privilege uh, operations but if we do a shell or actually if we go into that session interactively so we need to do sessions interactively one and we ask for a shell well actually if we try to escalate privilege right here if we do get system the escalation fails so if we go into a shell we are in the Windows machine, but we, we don't have privileges. We cannot do uh, interesting things in here. So let's exit the shell. Let's send this session to the background. And the, the, the main problem for escalating privileges is that the pesky user access control gets in the way. So if I try to run this command prompt, and I'm trying to run it as an administrator, I'm going to get the UAC popping up and say, you know, unless you click here, that thing is not going to escalate privilege. And, and if this machine is in, in Ukraine, uh, then you cannot click in here because you haven't got, uh, gotten that capability. So how can you bypass that, that control and escalate privilege? Well, precisely, we're going to use another exploit. So we're going to use an exploit of the Windows family for local machines that bypasses user access control, we're going to use this specific attack. Okay, And if we've set the first session as the trampoline for this one, and we do exploit, that's going to generate a second session that has the capability of bypassing the UAC. You see that flash that happened, maybe the customer, will, the, the, the victim will see this or not. Uh, uh, that's irrelevant. You know, what, what was that? You wouldn't know what's actually going on, even if he sees that. Uh, but now this, notice that when I do get system, it succeeds in the first attempt. So now I have some interesting privilege. So now if I ask for a shell here, 
and I execute, I'm going to achieve persistency by executing uh, this command. Let me explain them quickly. The, the first one, copy it into the clipboard, the first one actually modifies the registry and put the mylove.exe. Uh, actually, this has to be the mylove.exe64. That's a mistake. Sorry. So it's going to take that command and it's going to, that we downloaded from the Kali machine right here, as we see here. Uh, and we are going to be, uh, every time the machine reboots, this program is going to be invoked. So it will get me that session that we just saw. And it's going to look, when you do the task manager, it's going to look like the calculator. The other three commands basically activate the guest machine, makes a member of the admin group, and give it a password. So let's actually execute those commands. We paste the clipboard. And notice that they are all successful because I'm system. I can do whatever I want. But let's say that I investigate this machine and there's nothing juicy here. But I want to see, I want to move laterally. And to do so, I first need to know what are the names of the machines that are around. And I want to compromise precisely this machine. And actually, we can see here in the command line that this is the name of the machine, desktop, and ends in MTT. The other one is ends in MTV. And um, it has the that's the IP address, the address and it's in 31. Okay. So in order to move laterally, what we need to do is first find what's in uh, into that in that network. So from here we can issue net view. We probably need to issue it twice because we have a meterpreter. Yep. So if we do net again net view we're going to see that it's going to find that particular machine that we want to get, that MTT machine that we just saw, right? That ends in uh, the address uh, 31. So I know the name of the machine that I want to get to. That's good. But I don't know the password. I'm gonna, my bet is going to be, well, if I figure out the password of this user, and this user is connected into the network to this other machine, let's say that this is a server, for example, let me, let me see if this guy has, uh, assuming that this guy has, has access with his user ID and password there, if I get to know the password and the host name, I should be able to move laterally to it. But I do not know the password. Uh, that's a problem. And, and in order to get the password, we're going to run this command, right? So if we go here, let's exit the shell. And we are back in Metapreter. And if we paste that command, that should be able to paste to, to give us that password. And that is precisely the password, Q1D3M0. So we got that password in the clear. So now that we know the host name and the password, we can move laterally using, again, PowerShell. And the command to do that is, uh, here's the, the series of command. We put those variables, and basically we do this invoke command, uh, script block, and we use the my, the, the, the my love.exe we can download from the Kali machine and we move laterally uh, into that machine. And um, what we can do is that we can issue the command like this or we can use it encoded. I actually run this as we showed you before and got the encoded version, which I think it is, I mean, I, we are trying to avoid being detected by curator. We don't want curator to see any of this. So I'm grabbing the, the encoded version of this to move into that machine with that password and that user uh, in it. So let's actually do that. We need to exit this. Well, we don't want to exit. We're going to send it to the background. And we're going to grab the first session. Notice that we have two sessions. If we do sessions, we have the plain vanilla one and the one that escalate privilege. We need to grab the plain vanilla one. So we do sessions interactively one. We ask for a shell. And if we paste that command, that PowerShell command, we should be able to get a session, 
and as we see we get Metapreter session 3 open and that's good because that's a session in fact uh, that that's a session on the other machine let me show you that let me exit this shell let me send this session to the background and now we should have three sessions the plain vanilla one with M M uh, ends in MTV the one that escalates the privilege with MTV and the one we just got with MTT we can see that here which is the, the, the Windows machine that we move laterally with now that we got the user and the and the password well so we move laterally, we escalated privileges, we, we did all those beautiful things and now what we want to do is a final thing, let's clear the logs so let me grab the, the session that has the privilege escalation capability which is the session 2 and let's actually do clear event viewer and that should wipe out all the Windows logs. So, so we want to make sure that Curator doesn't see any of this. An obfuscated attack. Um, all started with a phishing, so very typical stuff to happen. And again, machines fully patched. So if we go to Curator here and we refresh this screen, let's see what Curator has been able to see. And as we see, we, we get we got two sessions. One session from the MTV machines, and, and this is the session with the MTT machine, the 31. Let's actually look into this uh, first offense, and let's display the rules of the things that Curator detected in here. And notice that it detected the PowerShell, the escalation, and you know, it detected all these things. In fact, um, Next time I refresh, I should have one more event at least, which is the clear of the event viewer that you, we should be able to detect. But notice that it detected the user access control and even tells me the technique I used, the Ford Helper that you saw me doing. Uh, so all these things, and you don't need all these to fire. Just one will do that. It will fire one offense that will invite you to actually investigate what is it that happened uh, there, right? You see, I just click on the summary again, and I got 50 event, and I'm pretty sure that the new event should be the clear event viewer, and here we see it, right? So all those things were detected even though I did a good deal of obfuscation, uh, but again, with modern machines, with Windows 10, in other videos we have shown you this working with Win 7, which is easier uh, to hack, but uh, <laughs> not, not impossible, none of them are impossible. You need to assume that the guy is going to get rid of or, or, or penetrate all the defenses that you have, call them firewalls, call them EDR technology, call them whatever, IPSs, etc. And they're going to get to the core of your Windows system. And that's what you want to have, Sysmon and Curator, uh, for detecting when those things, this is your last line of defense, when, when it can detect when these things are being uh, compromised.